Okay, in this uh, section we're going to discuss implicit differentiation. Very useful technique to differentiate equations that aren't functions. Anyway, uh, before we do that, I want to talk about the difference between explicit functions and implicit functions. Explicit functions are ones that you've seen before. Most of the functions you, you've looked at in your pre-calculus pre course would be explicit functions, where you have y on one side of the equal sign, you have an expression of x on the other. Implicit functions are ones where you have equations that are not solved for y, and in fact they might not be functions at all. Uh, however, they would define functions if you restrict to just looking at a piece of the graph. The first equation you can actually solve for y, and then you would have an explicit function, a linear function in fact. The second function, however, is not a function, it's an it's a equation of a circle. But if you look at the, um, the graph of the circle, couldn't you say that this equation for the circle actually defines two functions? If you just look at the upper half and the lower half separately, each of those is a function. So we say this equation defines two functions implicitly. Same is true with the third. The third, um, the third equation, of course, is a uh, hyperbola. And you could say this equation, if you just look at each branch separately, this equation defines two functions of x. All right, the last equation we'll look at more in class. It's called the folium of, of Descartes. Notice you uh, can't solve that for y, but yet it, 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 it will define, when we look at the graph in class, it, it will define several functions of x. Okay, so before we actually um, discuss this technique, let's do some warm-up problems here. Um, let's assume that y is a differentiable function of x. What would the derivative of x with respect to x be? It would be 1, wouldn't it? What would the derivative of y with respect to x be? It's not 1. The derivative of y with, with respect to x we, we write as dy dx, and you could write it as y prime as long as you don't get confused. y prime is not y to the first power. All right, what is the derivative of x squared with respect to x? It's going to be 2x times the derivative of what's inside, so 2x times 1, which is 2x. What's the derivative of y squared with respect to x? It's going to be 2y times the derivative of what's inside with respect to x gives you 2y times y prime. What's the derivative of x squared plus y squared with respect to x? Okay, you take the derivative of each, p, each term. The derivative of the first with respect to x gives you a 2x, or 2x times 1. But the derivative of the second term with respect to x uh, gives you 2y times the derivative of what's inside with respect to x, so that's why you get 2y y prime. Last one. So what's the derivative of x squared times the sine of y with, re with respect to x? Product rule. You take the derivative of the first, I'm sorry, you keep, keep the first one fixed and take the derivative of the second with respect to x. So the derivative of sine y with respect to x is cosine y times the derivative of what's inside with respect to x. You get a y prime plus the derivative of the first with respect to x. You get a 2x times sine y. All right, I think we're ready. So this, in order for this technique of implicit differentiation to work, um, we have to assume that y defines x as a, y uh, is a di can be written as a differentiable function of x if we look at a piece of the graph. And so we, we know this is true. Uh, remember the circle, we, could, we, we have two differ, differentiable functions of x here, the upper and lower half of the circle. So to use implicit di differentiation, the process is always the same. What you do is you just differentiate both sides with respect to x. You do not solve for y, you just get in there and differentiate both sides with respect to x. On the left side, you get 2x times 1 plus 2y times y prime. On the right side, you get 0. The second step is you solve for y prime. So in this case, you would subtract 2x, and you would divide by 2y, and your final answer is y prime equals negative x over y. That's the slope of the tangent line to the circle x squared plus y squared equals 9. Now, this inter interesting problem here because if you try to solve for y, notice you can't. You get plus, it's not a function. You get plus or minus the square root of 9 minus x squared. However, if you do what we were talking about and you break it into two separate functions, look at y1 being the upper half of the circle and y2 being the lower half of the circle, what, what would be the derivative of y1 with respect to x? You bring the one half down and you subtract one from the exponent and take the derivative of what's inside. 
you end up with negative x over the square root of 9 minus x squared. And since the square root of 9 minus x squared is y, you get negative x over y, which is exactly what we got when we used implicit differentiation. Same is true with the bottom half. Look, if you take the derivative of the bottom half of the circle, the bottom half of the circle has the equation y equals negative the square root of 9 minus x squared. So the derivative, when you bring the exponent down and subtract 1 from the exponent, take the derivative of what's inside, the negatives cancel and so do the 2's, so you get this. Notice, folks, this is not y. This is actually negative y, isn't it? Since y equals negative the square root. But when you move the negative up to the top, again, you get the same equation that we got when we used implicit differentiation. Let's, let's do another example. The process is always the same. You assume that if you just look at a piece of the graph, the equation def is, uh, defines y as a differentiable function of x. So when you differentiate both sides with respect to x in this case, you would take the derivative of each piece and you'd use the product rule on the first piece. The first times the derivative of the second with respect to x, you get a y prime there, plus the derivative of the first with, re with respect to x, 1 times the second, plus 0. On the right side, you take the derivative with respect to x, so you get 27y squared times the derivative of what's inside, you get another y prime. So in your homework, you'll actually um, find this to be true. You'll, you'll get several terms that have y prime in them. To solve for y prime, you always want to get the terms that have y prime together on one side, factor out the y prime, and then divide by um, all the other stuff. So in this case, y prime would be sine y over 27y squared minus x cosine y. It's also common that your derivative, or slope of the tangent, will have x's in the answer too. Well, let's, uh, there's one more thing I want to talk about. Um, in class, we're going to derive the differentiation formulas for the inverse trig functions. The ones that, that you need to know for Math 152 are the derivative of inverse sine, the derivative of inverse tangent, and the derivative of inverse secant. And, and to derive these, we're going to use the technique of implicit differentiation. Let, let's go over one of them now, and we'll do the other ones in class. Um, Recall, when you have, um, the way we define the inverse sign is we, um, we restrict the sine function and then we switch x and y. So the domain of the inverse sign would be negative 1 to 1 and the, and the range of the inverse sign would be negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And you, you could say that y is the inverse sine of x means the same thing as x equals the sine of y. This is the definition of any inverse function, isn't it? And, and note, since y is the inverse sine of x, y is always going, to between is always going to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Okay, so this is how we, how we, use, how we derive the di differentiation formula. If you let y be inverse sine of x, you could rewrite that using inverse functions. You'd say x equals the um, sine of y. And then you can use implicit differentiation here. You would say, okay, you differentiate both sides with respect to x. So on the left side, the derivative of x with respect to x is 1. And the derivative of the right side with respect to x, we know how to do that. We get cosine y times y prime. So there we go. The derivative becomes y prime equals 1 over cosine y. Now the only problem is um, we want to write this in terms of x. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, note that we can use the trig identity, cosine squared y plus sine squared y equals 1. If you try to solve for cosine y, though, don't you get plus or minus the square root of 1 minus sine y? But wait a second. We just got through saying that y is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. That means y is in the fourth quadrant or the first quadrant. And what is the sine of the cosine in the fourth or, or um, first quadrant? It's always positive. So because of that fact, the, the cosine of y is square root of 1 minus sine squared. But what is sine of y? Sine of y, recall, is x. So you get 1 minus... Cosine y can be written as the square root of 1 minus x squared. So that, that's how we got the, the dif differentiation formula for inverse sine. Anyway, we'll stop there, and we'll see you tomorrow.